Good morning YouTube. So I'm charging this top pack, but at the same time what I'm doing is monitoring the voltage on the bottom four packs here. So I've got my packs number one, two, three, and four that I'm testing uh, capacity of. And then down on the bottom I've got packs five, seven, eight, and ten, which are the four packs that I've already tested that are the closest in capacity to each other. So I'm just trying to figure out how the capacity of the packs affect the voltage in the 4S pack. So what I've got here, that's my cell monitor and number one there is my pack number five we're at 3.37 volts. Number two is pack number seven, which is actually the lowest capacity. And you can see it's dropping now 3.14 volts. This is pack number eight. It is up there pretty good, 3.44. And pack number 10, which is number four in the group, is again 3.44. Okay, so this is my cell voltage uh, tracking data that I collected on the uh, 4S pack that's powering the eye charger now. So right now I've got packs 5, 7, 8, and 10 in the bottom of the power shelf, and those are hooked up again as a 4S battery, 14.4 volts nominal, powering the eye charger. And so I started off here, charged uh, up to four volts per cell, and then ran it through actually three cycles where I ran one of the packs down to where it was either cut off by the BMS or I caught it. But anyway, ran through some cycles, charge, discharge cycles. So this would be representing like your typical solar charging during the day, discharging at night. So I started out, I charged the uh, pack up, did the top balance as I showed in an earlier video, ran it down, and then I did a non-balance charge, bring it back up, ran it down again, and then I did some more uh, charging to bring it up here and brought it down, charged it up again. So that's been the uh, cycling and what I've noticed is second group here, series number two, which is my pack number seven up here, was always the one that dropped out. And then the first pack, the blue one here, which is pack number five, was lagging behind. It was always dropping down a little bit lower than the rest, except for pack number seven, which completely dropped out. Pack eight and 10 tracked each other really well. I mean, they started out 3995, 3994, right before I recharged 3.448. 3.437. So that's telling me that packs 8 and 10 are pretty closely matched to each other in capacity and they follow each other quite well. And it's showing me that pack number 7 is quite a bit lower capacity. It, it tends to drop out like here right before I recharged it we were 3.222 and everything else was 3.4 something. So let's look at the actual capacity compared to that. So here's my capacity chart. So here we had pack number five tested out at 33.2, pack seven, 32.5, pack eight, 32.9, and then pack 10 at 33.2. So there's kind of two stories in that cell voltage tracking. One is that it seems like pack 8 and 10 are close enough to each other. So they're about 300 milliamp hours difference here. So that's telling me that probably within 300 milliamp hours or roughly 1% of the total pack capacity is probably close enough for my target. Pack 7 here is about 
400 and 700 milliamp hours below those two and that seems to be too far apart. Now the weird thing is pack number five is the highest capacity yet it was more closely tracking pack number seven here. So if we look here it was pack number seven was dropping out first but pack number five was was on its way out. So what I think is going on is at the cell monitor that I have, I have the, the Hobbymate battery monitor plugged into the balance cable and I believe those cell monitors take their power off of like the first pack or the first two packs. It's kind of hard to measure the power consumption but it's on the order of about 10 milliamps that that meter pulls and if you figure 10 milliamps over maybe four days that's about a hundred hours so 10 milliamps times a hundred hours is about one amp hour and I think what I'm seeing is that draw of the cell monitor is enough to pull pack number five from a 33 amp hour pack it's now a 32 amp hour pack. I think what I will do in the future is I'm going to unplug that cell monitor most of the time and I'll just plug it in at the end of a cycle when I want to check the voltages so I won't leave it plugged in all the time and I'll see what that does. So now that I've got 10 groups of cells tested and I have a feeling for the range of capacities I can expect to get in the future. I should be able to build packs in the future that are 32.5 or greater. So I think I'll use that 32.5 as my target capacity and then what that means is any of these packs that are significantly more than 32.5 you need to bring them down to 32.5. So if we look here at pack number one, I tested that at 33.6 amp hours. So I'm about 1100 milliamp hours high. And if I look here, here's my pack number one. So I have cells in there from 4600 down to about 3600 milliamp hours. And if I go back to my individual cell data here, here's where I stopped picking cells down about 3,600 milliamp hours. But I have all these cells, 35, 34, 33. So these are, are fairly decent uh, cells down here that I didn't select. So what I could do here, I've got a 4,600 milliamp hour. If I were to replace this with a 3500 milliamp hour that would drop me down about 1100 milliamp hours and get pack number one down close to pack number seven. So just swapping out one cell I can bring this pack into line with the other one and get it uh, a little bit closer. So I want to do that experiment. I'll maybe pull this uh, 4618 pair of cells and replace it with something like 3500 and see what the the capacity tests out see if my plan will work here so I'll show you what that looks like here in the future uh, the other thing I did here with my pivot table I have the the sum of the capacities that I measured but then I also added in the internal resistance and so I compute the average internal resistance of these 10 pair of cells and the one thing I can do while I'm swapping these cells out I should probably pick out the cell that's the most different in internal resistance to the rest of them so here this 4618 happens to be a really low internal resistance it's 66 versus the average is 84 so if I can swap this cell out for something over here that's about 3500 
milliamp hours and maybe like this one 78 milliohms is a lot closer or 85 87 so I could pick one of these closer internal resistances when I'm swapping this one out and get closer to the pack average so if I remove a 66 and replace it with an 85 I'll probably get a lot closer to these other cells in internal resistance. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. I'm removing higher capacity a pair of cells and replacing it with lower but I'm also trying to bring the internal resistance a little closer to the average so that those 10 pair of cells are closer to each other both in terms of capacity and in terms of internal resistance and that gives me one bonus because I can turn a 3500 milliamp hour pair of cells into a 4600 I get to use one of my lower capacity pair and I get a higher capacity pair out of the the swap I can put that back into my stockpile for the next group of 10 packs that I want to build so I think that'll work so that's my next step here is I want to try swapping cells out of these uh, first packs here and then retest the capacity and see if I can get them all in this 32.5 like for instance I'll probably leave pack 2 untouched it's already within 250 milliamp hours of pack 7 I need to bring pack 1 down probably bring pack 3 down I might bring pack 4 down a little bit so try to bring everything down into the 32.5 range and see how that works so I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later here and if you have any uh, questions about that post up in the comment section below and I'll put uh, some uh, videos you might be interested in over here on the side and as always thanks for watching